Hello everyone! Today's recipe needs no introduction. Gobi Manchurian and I'm going to share the dry version with you that is going to stay crisp even after you toss it with the sauces. Hear that sound? That is one hour after I coated it with the sauces. I'm going to share all the tips and tricks by which you can make that. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Make sure to subscribe because you will love exciting recipes like this every week, right? <laughs> Alright then, let's make this together. I'm using a medium sized cauliflower and I cut the florets in approximately equal sizes so when you fry them they crisp up evenly. So the very first step is right here. If the cauliflower florets are cut in similar sizes, they are going to fry evenly and they are all going to turn crisp evenly. <laughs> we are going to blanch these cauliflower florets for 5 minutes. That's going to help them to partially cook and also get them nice and clean. So to blanch the cauliflower florets, take one big pot of water and bring it up to a boil. And next we are going to season this water with two teaspoons of salt and we are going to add the florets right in. We are going to place the lid on and let the cauliflower boil for just five minutes, not more than that. We only want to partially cook them. Okay, so if you're in a hurry and you want to skip this entire blanching step, you can do it. Just make sure to cut the florets a little more tiny so that when you fry it, it cooks through. Okay, five minutes up and now we are going to drain the water off and let the cauliflower florets cool down. It has cooled down now and now I'm going to dust the florets with two tablespoons of all-purpose flour or maida. I'm going to shake them thoroughly so every floret is coated with the dry flour. Coating with dry flour is very important because the dry flour is going to make sure that the wet batter is going to stick to the gobi and when you fry it, the batter is not going to come out. <laughs> and now we are going to make the wet batter to coat the florets with. We are using half a cup of cornstarch and half a cup of all-purpose flour or maida just a one to one ratio. To that we'll add a quarter teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of fresh ginger garlic paste and approximately two teaspoons of soy sauce. Next we are going to add water little by little and start to combine the batter. Adding water little by little is important because no clumps form that way and the batter turns out nice and smooth. The consistency that we are going for is slightly thinner than the batter you would use to make jalebi. Does that make sense? <laughs> I mean that the batter is not too thick and not too thin. It should not be so thin that it's not it's going to like slip away from the florets and it's not going to be so thick that it doesn't go into the crevices of the florets. Kind of like a medium consistency. Like that. In total I used approximately 3 fourth cup of water. Next, we are going to add 2 teaspoons of oil to the batter and we are going to beat the batter thoroughly to introduce some air bubbles. When you fry this light batter with air bubbles, it's going to turn really nice and crisp. Next, we'll add in all the coated cauliflower florets and coat it really well with the batter so that every piece and every little crevice has batter in it. Okay, so it's time to fry these. Let's take enough oil in a pan for deep frying. Enough so that the florets don't stick to the bottom of the pan when you drop them in. <laughs> Get the oil heated to medium temperature. I like to test this by adding a little batter to the oil and if it doesn't sizzle right away, the temperature of the oil is not right. So I'm going to let this heat up a little more and now it's time to drop the florets in. Make sure not to overcrowd the pan because in that case there's going to be a lot of moisture in the oil and the florets are not going to fry well. I usually don't disturb the florets for the first one minute. If you do, the batter tends to come off with your spatula. After a minute, you can move them around and let them cook for another two minutes. 
We are going to double fry the cauliflower to make it nice and crisp and this is the first round of frying. For this round we only want the florets to be like a light golden brown in color. We don't care about whether they are crisp or not. See just like that. Basically the coating sticks well to the florets and it's all done. So let's take out all the florets and set that aside. So our first round of frying is all done. Now let's take a look at the ingredients for the sauce. I'm using 1 tablespoon of crushed ginger, 1 tablespoon of crushed garlic, 3 to 4 green chilies finely chopped, 1 tablespoon of finely chopped coriander stems. You can use leaves if you'd like. Stems give a nice crunch. 3 tablespoons of finely chopped capsicum and 2 tablespoons of finely chopped spring onion grains. Next, we'll make a sauce mix with 2 tablespoons of tomato ketchup to make it nice and tangy, 1 tablespoon of red chilli sauce, 1 teaspoon of dark soy sauce, 1 teaspoon of white vinegar and we'll give that a good mix. Next, we're going to add 2 tablespoons of water. and 1 teaspoon of cornstarch. We are going to mix this till it forms a nice and smooth slurry. Cornstarch clumps up sometimes so make sure it's nice and smooth. Okay, now that our prep is done for the sauce, let us double fry our florets. This time the temperature of the oil should be more towards high heat and not medium heat and you can basically overcrowd the pan with florets, no problem. Now we've come to the most important tip to make your gobi manchurian nice and crisp. The secret is double frying the cauliflower florets. If you fry them only once, they may seem crisp right after you fry it but it's going to soon turn soggy. But if you fry them twice, the first time you fry them just a little bit and then you heat up the temperature of the oil and then keep frying them for 5 to 6 minutes till you actually see some dark brown patches coming on the cauliflower. That's very important. Once those patches come, you know that those patches are going to absolutely stay crisp even when you coat it with the sauces. I've tested this so many times, I'm telling you exactly what to do. So fry them till you get some dark brown patches and then you take it out and you're ready to go. The way you do it is that you fry it the first time, then get all the ingredients of your sauce ready and when all that is ready to go, fry it the second time and toss it in the sauces right away. It's been about 5 minutes and you can see that there are little dark brown spots that have come up on the florets. Those are going to be really crisp and that's exactly how we want them to be. There, just like that. So let's take out all the florets and set that aside. Let me quickly show you how crisp these have turned out to be. For the sauce, let's set a pan on high heat and add 4 to 5 tablespoons of oil. To that, we are going to add in ginger, garlic and the chopped green chilies. We are going to give this a quick stir just for approximately 30 seconds. You don't have to brown the garlic, that's going to change the taste. So, just a quick stir. Next, we'll add in the finely chopped bell pepper or capsicum and we're going to give that a very quick stir. We do not want the capsicum to get soggy. Nice and crisp, yes. <laughs> now let's add half of the coriander stems, half of the spring onion greens. Give that a quick stir and it's time to add in our sauce mix. Give the sauce mix a quick stir before adding it in so that there are no clumps. And then we are going to add a quarter teaspoon of black pepper powder and we are going to cook the sauce for approximately a minute so that it turns nice and thick. This is the last important tip in keeping the Gobi Manchurian crispy. Your sauce has to be thick and sticky. If the sauce is thin, it's going to seep into the batter. But if the sauce is thicky and viscous, it's going to have a hard time seeping in and the Manchurian is going to be crisp for a long time. <laughs> 
that looks good let's turn off the heat and add in the cauliflower florets let's toss them nicely so every floret gets that yummy sauce <laughs> I can still hear how crisp this is. I wish you were here. My kitchen smells so good and I cannot wait to taste this. Let's garnish with the remaining coriander stems and spring onion greens and your crisp gobi manchurian is ready. <laughs> Best starter ever, seriously. <laughs> So that's it. This is your bowl of crisp and delicious gobi manchurian. Just three important tips. One, the florets have to be of similar sizes. Two, you have to double fry until deep brown patches form on the florets. And third is that the sauce has to be thick and sticky. That's it. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. I'm on all of these different social media sites, so I would love it if you follow me. Oh, I forgot to tell you, if you like written recipes more compared to videos like these, you can totally visit my blog. All the written recipes are there. My blog is easy to remember, nupursindiankitchen.com. So do share the recipe with your friends and I will see you next week with another exciting recipe. Bye-bye.